and welcome back to Ripley's Dungeon, where we are creating a universe one chapter at a time. In this chapter, we're going to be talking about the creation of the universe, the five essences, and some of the more major events that lead up to the modern day. Let's get right to it, and I'll see you in the dungeon. In this universe, I wanted to kind of replicate a little bit of what I believe our modern universe is kind of created with the Big Bang, where you have all the like elements and essences and the more pure forms and chaotic that slowly started forming what we know as some of the more core elements in our universe. There are five main essences in, in this universe, water, wind, fire, ground, and one called the ether. Like I said before, in the beginning, it was just pure chaos. All of the elements were mixed and colliding and erupting. And over time, these elements kind of grouped together and started be having a conscious to them. The fire essence called himself Maspiel. The essence of air called herself Lepat. The essence of water called herself Laguez. And the essence of rock and ground called himself Fjord. And the essence of ether called herself Itari. Even at that stage, there was still just a chaotic war going on between them, but soon they started to take sides with each other. Maspel and Lupat had a vision of how they wanted the universe to be ran, and Laguez and Fjord didn't agree with them. So the cosmic war started between them. And in this war, whenever they fought with each other, and pieces of them would be struck and off, they started to form what we know as the universe. Most of the stars were created from the heat and the power of Maspiel. From the flesh of Fjord, the planets and the asteroids were formed. From the blood of Laguez, the comets, and all of the water and ice throughout the universe was made. And from Luplat, she created gravity, she created orbits. And during this time, there was no ground made. Each of these four essences, seeing that no progress was made, created their own gods or deities to help fight for them. These four gods were known as the gods of chaos. Fjord made Ella, who is the queen in the mountain. Mespel made Wukong, who is known as the sun king. Luguez made Ferowin, who is the lord of the seas. Lupat made Thea, who is the orbital queen. These gods made races that started the timeless war. They were left on the planets to constantly fight and to overtake one another. But in this world, their souls weren't bound to anything but beacons. So when they were slayed, their souls would seek back the beacon and their body would be made anew from the ground. They didn't have to eat. They didn't have to sleep or drink. It was just war all the time. During this time, Itari stayed to herself. She was not a fan of war. She thought it was useless and unconstructive. During this time, she did choose to master something that she calls the weave. Her siblings became weaker and weaker over the eons that they fought. Them creating gods, which then created races, and drew from their power. So she made a plan to seal them away. She made four empty realms for each of her siblings. And in a time called the cleansing, she bestowed two thirds of their powers in each of those realms and kept their cores with her. Those realms are what we know as the elemental planes. And she took the cores with herself to her own realm so her siblings could never come back and cause war throughout the universe. She then felt pity for the gods and the races that her siblings had created. She tried to convince the four gods that war and chaos is not what they should be doing. They should focus on creation and leading. They did not agree with her. So she sealed them away with each of their parent essences in their realms with them. She allowed them to have influence out of those realms as long as they didn't cause any unnecessary chaos and war. She then couldn't do anything for the races that the gods had created, so she made a separate realm and put the worlds that they were in in that realm, and that realm's called Valheim. In that realm, they still fight 
endlessly because that's all that they have known. That's all that they can do. She then made a duplicate planet called Thorabine, where she made, again, the races that were made before, but put their souls attached to the weave that she had created. So whenever their souls would be released from their bodies, they had a place to go. They could go into their, their weave and get reabsorbed. She also gave them free will to do whatever they wanted to and for that to affect their outcome in their life. She, had, she knew she had to make new gods to help govern this new world and she needed to make plegitation and animals in life. So she created a handful of gods to help overlook this world. Every time one of the mortals or races would go to sleep, they are subconsciously connected to this weave. So their dreams become creation. And she had to make a realm for those dreams to go because in the beginning, they were just spawning on Thorbine. And if they were a good dream, it really didn't cause too much havoc. But if they had nightmares, it would do devastation to the lands. So she created two more realms, one for dreams and one for nightmares. I'm going to be going over realms in a couple of chapters later, so I will highlight those realms whenever we get to that point. The realm of dreams is called Moon Sanctum, and the realm for nightmares is called the Shadow Isles. She also knew that now that she has made more gods, and she knew that the races were going to devote themselves to those gods as soon as they made their presence available to them, she needed a place for the people to go to that chose morally bad things and would sin throughout the world. So she made the seven hells of damnation and made a god to overlook it. The god is called Anubis. She then needed to make a system to judge the mortals and their choices that they've made throughout their lives. So she created the three sisters of fate. They sit in a realm called Limbo. And whenever you die, they come get you from whichever realm you died at and take you to limbo to be judged. From there, depending on which god you worshipped and how well you worshipped them, you get transported to either their realm or get sent to the seven hells of damnation. For all the gods that she made to govern the world, excluding a couple of them, she made a realm for them to reside in called the God's Mind. So whenever you pass away and you get judged by the Sisters of Fate, if you worship your god properly, and he deems you worthy enough to come into his realm, he will send for someone to come get you. And then you spend the rest of your eternity in that realm with that god. Each god has a different plan for their followers whenever they get to their realm. Itaria herself resides in the eye's horizon with the four cores of her siblings. And for any immortals or races that didn't tip the scales either way. So if you have a infant that died at birth, they would go to her realm for her to overlook them. Or any orphans that just got dealt a terrible hand and didn't worship anyone, but didn't do anything bad throughout their life. And the same goes for anyone else. They would get transported to her realm to forever live their afterlives with Itari. That is all for this week's chapter. Next week, we're going to focus all on the known gods and deities so far in this universe and we're learning a little bit about each of them depending on how long it's going to take we might split that into two different chapters so thank you so much for watching and remember go play have fun spread love and i'll see you next week in ripley's dungeon hey what did the farmer say when he lost his tractor Where's my tractor?